What's good YouTube, it's Justice I Used To Be Pay and today I'm back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about who I believe to be the most exploited rapper in the game. Now, exploitation when it comes to rap in the rap industry is not anything new. We hear about it all the time. Rappers not being happy with, happy with their labels. They have to do this, they have to do that. They have to drop this amount of albums. This album didn't count as a mixtape. This one count, you know, all that type of stuff. We hear about managers in the rap game taking advantage of artists. But I think this one is a little bit different. This isn't something that we see all the time. It's not necessarily new, but it's just not something we always see. And the rapper that I'm speaking about is the rapper Lil RT. Now, if you don't know who that is, he is a nine-year-old rapper from Atlanta. Yes, he's a nine-year-old rapper. And he recently went viral because of his jarring lyrics for a nine-year-old. No, he wasn't saying anything that was super, super deep or super emotionally mature that you wouldn't expect from a nine-year-old. He was rapping like your average trap rapper. He was rapping like Lil Durk, like Lil Baby. And his song, 60 Miles, recently went viral with his, I guess, hook or the, the line that caught people's eyes the most, which was, if you ain't sucking a uh, little bit, you can get the fuck up out my shit. A nine-year-old said this. I'm not going to play it for copyright reasons, but yes, a nine-year-old said, if you ain't sucking dick, little bitch, you can get the fuck up out my shit. Now, obviously, this went super viral because no kid's really supposed to be speaking like that, especially on like a public stage, a rapper. It's just obviously very jarring. And the song isn't bad. Like the song's not bad. So it was like a perfect combo of the song actually not being that bad and the kid cussing, which just like blew it up. It was just like a perfect little bubble. But I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I think this is pretty nasty. This to me is just a group of adults taking advantage of a kid, getting money and clout off of a young kid. And now, again, like I said earlier, we see you know, exploitation in the rap game all the time. We see manipulation in the rap game all the time. But this is different, right? When it comes to the average, like, rap game manipulation or average rap game exploitation, at least the person's typically an adult and they willingly sign a contract. Now, that contract can be horrible. They may have had to sign that contract because they were dead broke before and without it, they couldn't do anything. Or now that they're in that contract, years down the line, they want to get out. There's a whole bunch of different things. But at least when it comes to an adult, they had the wherewithal to be like, yeah, I'm signing this. They they willingly signed it for the most part, for the most part. I know there's, you know, some instances maybe like Suge Knight is holding you over a balcony, but in general, they typically willingly go into these deals that end up being bad in the long run and end up being manipulative in the long run. This is a, this is a child. He, he cannot make that decision. He cannot willingly sign up for anything at the age of nine years old when it comes to something in the public light. So this is even worse in my opinion. This is manipulation, this is exploitation, on the highest level. There are a whole bunch of examples of what I just talked about earlier with manipulation, and these are adults with adult level reasoning who are getting into these deals and end up getting screwed, end up getting manipulated, end up getting exploited. This is a child who barely has child level reasoning at this point, like he's nine. There, there's just not a lot going on up here when you're nine for most people. So it's just really not good, and who knows how this will affect him in the long run. We've already seen a pattern of child actors, child TV stars and stuff who end up being extremely messed up because of the things that happened to them when they were younger, the lifestyle that they were exposed to when they were just just babies, pretty much babies. We've seen it with social media stars. We've seen it with kids of those parents, you know, those parents that follow their kids around with the camera and put it all in their face, their entire childhood and their entire childhood from birth all the way up to high school is on the internet. We've seen it with those kids and how some of those kids turn out. Imagine a rapper. Not only a rapper, but a rapper who raps in the way that Lil RT does, with the lyrics that he says. His digital footprint has been ruined before the age of 10. It's, his digital footprint is cooked for the rest of eternity. Now you could say, oh, well, you know, maybe Lil RT wants to rap. That's cool. Lil RT can rap. But why does he have to rap about the stuff that he raps about? There's no nine-year-old who's really like, yeah, I'm going to rap about fellatio. That, that's just not really a thing unless he's just imitating what he's seeing around him, which I don't even know if he's imitating. I feel like it's being fed to him, but just think about this, right? Rappers have a very short shelf life, most of them. Most rappers fall off after two, two, two three years. What happens to Lil RT after he falls off? What happens if he falls off? I'll say, uh, hopefully he doesn't, but what if he does? His entire future is completely altered by some choices that he didn't really make at nine years old. 
If he falls off by, by the time he turns 11, the rest of his social life will never be the same again because of what he did when he was nine. Imagine if what you did when you were nine controlled and determined your social life for the rest of eternity. That would be insane. He will never go to school and be a normal kid again if he falls off as a rapper. He'll never, you know, go to college and be normal again. He might not even, you know, have a professional job down the line and be, he won't even potentially have that chance because of some stuff that happened when he was nine. Some stuff that he had no control over because I don't care what you say, this is not a good look for a child. No child should be rapping about this type of stuff. So hypothetically, let's just say Lil RT falls off in two to three years. Now he's messed up. He doesn't want to go back to school. He's, he's on the internet. He's famous, right? Why can't he just keep getting money, right? I don't understand. He won't be able to understand what's going on, really. Why am I falling off? Why can't I just keep making music? I don't want to go to school. Why do I have to do these classes? I was just doing, you know, interviews with Kai Sinat. Like, it's going to mess up his entire mental state. So if he falls off, who knows what goes on with him? It's just an extremely volatile position to put a young child in for no reason. Again, if he was a child actor, if he was rapping like, you know, Drake's son Adonis, don't talk to my man like that, just regular stuff. Okay, that's that's fine. If he falls off as a rapper because of that, it's fine. We can just pick up the pieces and keep moving on. But when you rap like how Lil RT raps, your life will never be the same in the future because of it. And who knows what happens? Maybe he won't even want to rap in two years, but his future will never be the same again because of a group of adults around him who just wanted to make a quick buck. There is no reason for any child, especially of the age of nine. Again, let me remind you, this kid is nine. He hasn't yet, he's not even turned 10 yet. There's no reason for him to rap about the stuff he raps about. Guns, killing, gangs, fellatio. Like there's no reason for a child that young to be rapping about that type of stuff. I don't care what his environment is. I don't care where he is. There's no reason for this to be propped up. Now, if he grew up around that stuff, that's one thing. I get that. I understand it. But you're like positively rewarding him when he raps about this type of stuff. And again, it's not the child's fault. I have no ill will towards Lil RT. He is an innocent child. He might be a bad kid. I ain't gonna lie. But he's still a child. This falls on his parents, the managers, and any other adult around him who is boosting him up because of this stuff. And again, Lil RT may want to rap. Maybe this is all he wants to do with his life. And this is just his dream. That's cool. He can rap. But it's very clear that he's being fed the stuff he's saying. It's very obvious. Because if you listen to him freestyle, it's not that good. I'm, I'm not here to really analyze the, the child rap skills ability, but you can clearly see that Lil RT probably not writing his own lyrics. Or if he is, he's not writing all of them by himself. So somebody is feeding this stuff to him. They're, they're very much feeding him these things to say. And it's just not cool. And this entire Lil RT like scenario or whatever you want to call it has been very obviously planned from the beginning. This was not an organic blow up from a little kid who just liked to rap. And, you know, he cussed a little bit, but that's what he grew around. He, you know, he snuck behind his mama's back and was recording on her phone and uploaded it to SoundCloud. Then it blew up. No, this wasn't a little kid who has a TikTok his mom doesn't know about. And he was doing a freestyle and it went viral. This is none of that. This was a very obvious planned push because if you look 60 miles is the first song that Lil RT put out okay cool maybe the song blew up and he did his thing and the internet took a hold of it no this song came out with a music video it debuted with a music video okay well maybe you're like ah you know maybe his friends just wanted to help him he has some family members who you know owned a camera they just want to help him okay maybe but also that is a pretty decent looking music video. It's not like, you know, some rundown, just iPhone, we're recording, you're a little rapping in the thing. No, there's people there, he's got on a chain, there's cars there. And also, he's got a videographer. So this was very much planned. And I think the plan here was to obviously have this kid rapping these crazy lyrics, but also make sure you see his face. Because if this video was just uploaded, or not the video, if this song was just uploaded, you know, maybe people would think it's weird, but they wouldn't really care. It wouldn't really catch on. But when you see the nine-year-old saying these things, it hits different. And people are going to share it because, oh my God, look at this little baby rap, not little baby. Look at this, you know, little child rapping this way. This was just all around a very obvious push. This was not an organic blow up. There was promo for this. There was an entire music video for this song. This was his first song ever, and it came out with a music video. Who on their first song makes a music video? Most people don't. Most people don't even know if they're going to be halfway decent. This 
was obviously planned. This was planned. This was orchestrated with the intention of blowing up because look at this nine-year-old. He says crazy things. Oh my gosh, he's cursing. This was very much designed. So it makes it even worse, in my opinion, that a group of adults came together and they said, look, little homie over there, he likes to rap. Okay, but let's make him rap about this because this is going to get the clout. This is going to get the money. We need to put this all together. Let's go out and do this because if little homie was just sneaking and rapping on TikTok or sneaking and, and uploading to SoundCloud, you know what? I'd put my hands up and say, hey, he's just, you know, he's, he's a bad kid, whatever. He snuck around, said some stuff he wasn't supposed to say. This was not him doing this on his own. This was an orchestrated plan by a group of adults to make sure that this nine-year-old blew up because they knew if you could get his face in front of a camera saying these outlandish things, people are going to click on it. And they were 100% right. Some people may say, oh, well, there are bad kids everywhere. I know there's a little RT in my family. There's a little RT on my block. And that's true. There are bad kids everywhere. Don't get me wrong. But those kids are typically being punished throughout their entire childhood. Most bad kids grow up knowing that, yeah, I'm probably not the best behaved child. You know, they either get a whole bunch of suspensions in school or, you know, they get the buzz cut haircut. Some of them get whooping. Some of them get their phone took, the PS took, whatever. They're always in trouble. Lil RT is being rewarded for this stuff, and that's what makes it a little bit different. It's not just, oh, he's a bad kid, whatever. You know, he's doing bad things. No, he's being rewarded with this stuff. He's getting money for these things. He's getting chains. He's getting to meet people like Kai Sinat. He's doing all these things because of his bad behavior, because of the things that he's saying that he probably shouldn't be saying. So that's what makes it a little different. Of course, Lil RT is not unique. He's not a randomly evil kid with, you know, all these bad intentions. Like he's not, he's not anything out of the blue or out of the ordinary. But the difference is the level of rewards that he's getting for it. Because now he's going to associate those things with positive things. He's going to associate, well, when I cuss and when I rap and when I say these crazy things or I make these strange jokes that I'm going to get into later, people laugh and they reward me with attention and money. And I get to go here and I get to go to the mall and I don't have to go to school. So... This is, these, these, are, these things are good, right? They're all good, right? Why would a nine-year-old brain be able to separate these things as good and bad when he's being rewarded for all of this negativity? Why would he ever stop rapping about the street life or women or guns if that's what's making him happy right now? That's what's providing him with all the stuff he has. Why would he ever stop? And why would he stop at just rapping about it? Why wouldn't he start doing it? If he can get money for rapping like a, a gangster and doing all these things, why not go out and be a gangster for real, right? I mean, that's... That makes sense to me. You're going from A to B. That's the logical next step in my opinion. So it's like the difference between the average bad kid in your family or the average bad kid on the block or the average bad kid in your third grade classroom and Lil RT is they're being punished. They're consistently trying to be corrected by their mom or their grandma or maybe their grandma's a little, you know, gone and she's not paying attention. Their, their teacher's trying to correct them. Their auntie, their uncle, they're consistently being told, no, don't do that every light, every lane of the of life, right? Maybe they continue to be bad, whatever, but they're not being rewarded by the people around them and the adults around them for this poor behavior. That's the main difference. Uh, Lil RT is not a randomly unique bad kid. I don't think Lil RT is something just evil and he's just this horrible child. No, he's a regular kid. He's a regular bad kid. It happens. But when you start to reward him for that stuff, that's when it kind of messes with that young brain because again maybe if he was 14 15 he could see okay i can just do this kind of you know rap and stuff and i don't really have to go out in the streets or anything like that this stuff isn't really good but it makes me money maybe he could start to process that at like 14 15 16 but at nine everything they see is reality everything they hear is reality everything that they say is reality at the age of nine so when it comes to things like this how do you how do you get a distinction in between what he should be doing and what he shouldn't be doing? How does he learn that distinction when all he knows is when I say fuck, bitch, shit, piss, dick, all that, I get money. I get a chain. I get a PS5. I get the new Fortnite skin. When I say if she ain't sucking dick, get out my whip, I, I get all these things. So why would he ever in his mind se separate that stuff? Why would he ever think it is think of it as a bad thing? Even if you want to say, oh, well, when Lil RT goes home, he's great, he's respectful, he talks to his mom, yes, ma'am, uh, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. When you're nine years old, it's impossible to distinguish the difference between these things that are good and bad when you're constantly being rewarded for the bad things like you would be rewarded for the good things. It's hard to make that distinction. So when he raps about guns and gangs and, and women and whatever, if you want to sneak on the side and be like, hey, RT, th this stuff ain't really that cool. 
it doesn't matter because subconsciously he's not going to be able to separate the two. He's too young to be like, yeah, this is all an act. He's too young. The adults in his life are sacrificing his childhood for a monetary gain, a monetary gain that we don't even know how long it'll last because who knows? He could fall off in two months and, and three months or, you know, maybe he's around for five years. Who knows? Right. We really don't know. But they're sacrificing his childhood and his development for a monetary gain. Because rapping the way he's rapping, he's going to grow up fast. It, it's just going to happen. You don't rap about sex and murder and guns and gangs and don't grow up fast. That's just how it works. He's going to start thinking like an adult and trying to act like an adult and trying to imitate adults because he's talking like an adult. He doesn't, he's not going to think of himself as a little kid. So he's going to grow up fast, which puts him in a position to potentially be in the streets, be in gangs, possibly own drugs, who knows, right? Because he's growing up so fast in front of our eyes. Because when you rap like an adult, when you talk like an adult, and people around you are treating you like an adult, because I've seen the videos of him walking through the mall, and they calling him big bro, and they doing all this, and they're laughing at his jokes that, again, I'm going to get into later in this video that are pretty disgusting. You grow up a little faster because you think you're an adult. I'm making all this money. I got this chain on. I just said, fuck shit, bitch. How am I not an adult? So, again, they're sacrificing his childhood for the sake of monetary gain. And this just kind of goes to show that we really don't protect our little boys. We don't. We think of them as just, hey, you know, you'll grow up, you'll be tough, whatever. We don't have to worry about you. Boys will be boys. Do your thing, right? We don't really protect them because I hate to have to do this, but if we flip the script, if the roles were reversed and this was an, a nine-year-old little girl who was rapping like sexy red and had a full face of makeup and was twerking in the videos and talking about her body and sex... Y'all would be disgusted. This obviously Lil RT gets his backlash. Don't get me wrong, but that that would be off the internet immediately. People would be disgusted. They would be taking this page down. They would be re reporting the manager. They would be doing all types. It would be the internet would be in shambles. It would be on fire if this was a little girl twerking and wearing makeup and and talking about sex. But since it's a little boy talking about sex at nine years old, it's you know I, I mean he shouldn't be doing that, but it's kind of funny. I ain't gonna lie, it's kind of funny. We don't protect our little boys. We just think of them as just, hey, they're going to grow up, do whatever, man. You, 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 you a boy. You'll be all right. And to end this video, I'm going to leave you with this. This is real evidence of Lil RT being negatively affected by the people around him, being exploited for cloud money. This is me actually giving you some proof. This isn't just, hey, you know, I think this will end up bad. I don't think this is good for Lil RT. This is real evidence as to his behavior just not being okay or normal for a nine-year-old. Lil RT seems to have a kind of an obsession with the R word. And yes, it's that R word. The one that starts with R, ends with E, has four letters, rhymes with grape. It's that one. He has been seen on multiple occasions making R word jokes or saying the R word randomly. And I give me a girl, and I want a hug. Mm. And I got what? Or even imitating it in a TikTok. Lil RT rates grapes my clothing brand. And that's just not normal behavior for a nine year old. And obviously, you can be like, ah, oh, well, some kids grow up making dirty jokes and they don't really know what it means. You're not wrong. But when you're in a room full of adults and you're making these type of jokes, and no one corrects you, that's, that's where the problem stems. Obviously, Lil RT probably will never be able to understand the severity of that word when he's nine years old. I get that. But you can at least say, hey, bro, don't say that. I'll give Kai Sinat his credit. He at least corrected him. But these other adults around him, the ones that are actually around him all the time, clearly don't care. Because there's no way a nine-year-old is making those type of jokes. Most nine-year-olds don't know anything about sex or anything of the sort. Now, now, maybe some do, and they make their little jokes with their friends. Okay. But for him to feel comfortable enough to make a grape joke around a room full of adults and nobody say anything is crazy. And it's kind of indicative of the people around him. The, the, the little kid made a grape joke in a room full of adults. I understand. You're not, you're not his dad. You don't have to be his dad to be like, hey, bro, don't, nah, we ain't doing that. Don't do that. You don't say that. You don't have to be his father 
or his mother or his uncle or his, you don't have to be anybody to him to say, hey, bro, don't do that if you're his manager or whoever else. So that's that's real evidence of this is just not right. Something is clearly wrong here. A lot is clearly wrong here. And I really just don't like to see this. I really don't. Again, kids make crazy jokes all the time when they don't know what stuff means. I understand it. Maybe he just doesn't really understand the word, which is probably the truth. But when you make that joke in a room full of adults as a nine-year-old, there should be someone there to correct you. But that's pretty much going to cap off the video. I really just don't like to see this. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, he's, he's imitating the rappers he sees online. He's imitating Lil Durk and, and NBA Young. No, he's not. No, he's not. Because he wouldn't be allowed to imitate those people if he had some right guidance around him. If he had some proper guidance around him. If he, when he turns 18 or whatever, if he gets to his teenage years and he wants to be a rapper and say all that stuff, whatever. If he wants to be a 16 year old drill rapper, who cares? At least he has some sort of mental capacity to make that decision. But when you're nine years old and not only are you rapping like that, but people are encouraging you to rap like that. It's just a very gross situation in my opinion. But Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Lil RT's the GOAT and every little kid that's nine years old should be rapping about, you know, giving head and all that. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just a weirdo. Who knows? But that's going to cap off my video. If you agree, you disagree, call me an idiot, whatever, down below in the comments. Leave a like, leave a share, leave a subscribe. It helps me out a ton. Have a good day. Be safe. Be blessed. Peace.